Here we go then, playoff semi-final. Kitman first off the coach, as per usual. Mounts and Paul, little shout out to Mounts' hair there. <laughs> I forgot how long that was to be fair, what an effort that is. But the Kitman always uh, looking after the lads. Brilliant. Nice to see Peter Jordan as well, welcoming everyone off the coach, which was a nice touch I thought on the day. And the lads, yeah, overall looking very relaxed, I think. The, the preparations were good. The game was on the Sunday. We spent the Saturday evening um, in the hotel together. We wanted to make sure, obviously, the lads had everything they needed in terms of food, a good night's sleep, you know, pre-match in the morning um, together as a group, and we wanted them to all, all be together for that part of it which I think was important and Dow's got all the directors and sponsors and people that had worked really hard for the club during the season he got them all there to, to have dinner together which I thought was nice and um, you know the, the boys certainly showed their appreciation as well so that was a that was a real nice touch as well great to see the supporters there um, clapping the lads off the coach I think again giving them that extra bit of a lift and Here's the lads. Heidi, thinking about scoring the winner already, as all good strikers do. I think one of the keys was the strength for the bench we had on the day as well. You know, there was some really good players that didn't make the bench that day. And um, it was obviously pivotal, the, the, the options we had coming off the bench. So it was really, really important for us as Wildstone. Me and Dallas had gone to watch them at Bath on the Wednesday and been really impressed with them. What a performance in the quarter-final. They, they completely dominated at Bath, which was a surprise, actually. And, um, yeah, we, we knew it would be a tough game. We, we, we tried to relay that onto our lads of how tough the game would be. And, obviously, we played them twice and not scored against them in the league. So, we knew how tough of a game it would be. And we, we certainly made sure we, we prepared in that manner. But I think going back to the hotel, it was one of them things you look back on now and just think, did it give us that extra bit of energy towards the end of the game? The fact that we'd all been away, we were well rested, we'd, we'd eaten the right things, we'd, you know, we'd, we'd spent that time really gearing up for the game. I, I think that might be one of the keys to, to what happened in the, in the latter part of this game. Great to watch it back. I haven't had the opportunity to probably watch it like this. We, we kind of watched the game after it happened to prepare for the final, but watching it back like this is uh, is excellent. Obviously knowing the outcome as well. There's Pox on the end. Best player on the pitch in the quarter final at, at Bath. He was by a mile and, and we were really impressive in that day. Part of the reason Dallas wanted to sign him for sure. There's the huddle, famous huddle. Dallas, uh, I think we introduced that at Dulwich was the first time we did it and rather than just the team that was starting the game getting in the huddle, he wanted everyone in so the backroom staff, the, the subs the players that won even in the squad that day all getting together so we could show that kind of unity which was great and Casey always spoke really well in these huddles and it just showed that sen sense of togetherness I think that everyone was in it together which again I think probably got us over the line in the end and as well as the support on the day which was incredible I think there was 3,000 in there so fantastic support there's the lineup back five quite familiar towards the end of the season a lot of quality in front of it and, and like I said if you look at the bench and the options we had coming on we were really fortunate that we could we could make the changes we did and Wildstone's strength was their midfield, Poku, Smith. We knew that would be an area we'd have to kind of win the battle in because their midfield was so strong. Uh, and we knew it was going to be such a tough game, the way they were so organised. And we were ready. And two and a half minutes into the game, the game plan went out the window. <laughs> Corner. Freddie Grant, back post. 1-0 down. I mean, it's a tremendous leap from him. A good header. He, he leaps really well for his size. And... But we're disappointed with the way we've conceded that, obviously. Um, I think both teams knew how important the first goal would be in the game. And I think you can see that by the, the way the Wildstone players and fans celebrated the first goal. I think we knew it would be a tight game. And 
you can see with the way they celebrated just how important that first goal was and three minutes in massively disappointed and then Connor Stevens gets a, a run on Cookie 20 minutes 2-0 down I think it went through a couple of bodies on the line as well so squeezed the ball in and for me, again, you look at their body language now, they think probably job's half half done after 20 minutes. You know, if there's one team you don't want to be 2-0 down against, it's certainly Wildstone with, with how they play and how they get behind the ball. So to find ourselves in that situation was 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 a bit of a daunting one, to be fair, on, on, on the dugout. We were, you know, that certainly was a big sucker punch for us. I can smile because I know what happens at the end. <laughs> Fast forward 76 minutes, there wasn't much else happening in the game up until that point. We were huffing and puffing, they were really resolute and, and well organised and we were just looking for that little chink of light to, to try and make something happen or for the ball to drop for us and we obviously win a corner. And the whole game's about to change in the next few seconds. Max was going to take a quick one I think to Hodgie as well but decided to put a ball in the box for the big ones. Get in there, Musa. What a header. Brilliant. And you could sense from that moment on the, the, the atmosphere of the whole ground just changed. And you can see and you will see the impact it had on our players. But to get back in the game at that point was so important. And one thing that people won't recognise is if you watch Greg Lua how he blocks the keeper off because the keeper probably should be coming to get that. Look at Lua, just making sure the keeper can't come and I think their defenders were expecting the keeper to come and claim that and they were a bit indecisive and Musa could, could head it in and anything in that range he's going to head in if he's got a chance to attack it and suddenly it's game on. And you could just hear, look, Casey trying to whip the noise up even more but the, the, just the noise in the ground suddenly changed from this point and you can see just the intensity now, we're starting to win first and second balls and there's a bit more energy in the game in general because it was just obviously petering out at 2-0 and Wilson were happy to take the sting out of the game. So suddenly there's a bit of life in the game and a bit of energy in the game and a bit of tempo, which is obviously, for us as a team, it was one of the important things last, last season. Anytime there was a game that was a bit of a dead game and no atmosphere and no pace to the game, I think they were the games we struggled in. And that was certainly this game when we were 2-0 down, but... We were a team that thrived off playing at high tempo and having space to attack and running and tackling. And, and we just started doing this after that goal because it just gave everyone a bit of life. So Suddenly we started having bodies forward. And what we did with the formation, we changed to a 4-4-2 prior to Moose's goal. We changed it to a 4-4-2, obviously... Hyde, Hodges and Ferdinand all came on before that goal and um, we changed to a 4-4-2. Hodges played from the right, Kretschmar from the left because we wanted them both to come inside on their strongest foot because they're both really number 10s that play inside. But we wanted to get two strikers on the pitch as well so Heidi went up top with Greg Lua. So for a lot of the game it was a 4-2-4 really when we were chasing it but we wanted Hodges and Kretschmar both to come inside and, and cause problems centrally and the fullbacks to go on the outside of them. So. Certainly the change of shape paid off in that respect with the personnel we, we decided. And there was discussion on the bench, obviously, of who we were going to take off and who should stay on. And We knew from our time at Hampton, you always keep Kretschmar on the pitch if you need a goal because he always comes up with a goal in the big moments. So we basically adapted the formation to suit the players we, we, we had to keep on the pitch. And again, these are the situations we wanted to get Hodgie in. Driving inside rather than on the outside to try and make things happen centrally. And again, you can just see the intensity of the whole place changing. The noise is incredible. The, the atmosphere, absolutely incredible. It's great. unbelievable to watch it back. Good delivery. And Connor Stevens headed everything away for them, to be fair, on the day. He had a, he had a really good game. He, he headed a lot of good crosses out. And look at the bodies we've got in the box. Knew we needed to get bodies in. 
came third now winning a tackle. That was one of the keys for me was the substitution when Kane came on. He gave us that extra bit of energy in midfield to win second balls and, and, and regain the ball for us, which we obviously needed the ball to get up the pitch. So he really played well when he came on. And again, you can even sense from this moment on, what are we, 10 minutes to go plus injury time that the Wilson have decided kind of just to to sit in a little bit and, and try and try and get themselves over the line by just defending their own box and you do wonder what was going through their players' mind because obviously, you know, they were so comfortable up to that goal and, and the goal has just changed the whole thing. The, the, the atmosphere of the ground now has completely changed. The energy of our players has changed. And you can see Pocoulet trying to get some information onto their players in the middle of the pitch, trying to get them to calm down because they were rattled at this point and I think we, we kind of sensed something else was going to happen. And you could even feel that at this time that we were going to be in the ascendancy. Again, Kane regaining the ball for us. Such an important role he played when he came off the bench. And obviously Hodges and Heidi will get most of the headlines in terms of the three subs, but he played such an important role when he came on the pitch. And again, the, the pattern really of them retreating and us trying to get the ball forward and get bodies around. And again, every time the ball popped out, there was now a Woking player in and around it to try and recycle it back in. And the amount of times we did that to prolong attacks was was what kept the momentum going because you need now to keep the momentum up. When, when you're having a spell like this, you need to keep them in their own half. It's a great ball from Musa. And obviously with two players up front, you've got the option to run channels, but also have someone who's always going to be in the box. And again, we were now playing for moments like this, the so long throws, corners, could, could we, like the first goal, could something drop? The famous Greg Lua long throw, which he told us about about halfway through the season. Much to our frustration, but... <laughs> and again, bodies in the box, waiting for the ball just to drop, and a little bit unlucky for Moose. A little feathered header would have been better there, so we had two or three men in behind him, but just probably got a bit too much on it, so... But again, we stayed calm, we weren't erratic, we didn't just whack the ball, we tried to still get the ball in good areas and, and play with a bit of quality. And we talked to the boys about staying calm under pressure. I use the phrase with them on the Thursday night, teacup, which I got from uh, Clive Woodward, which is thinking clearly under pressure and the boys had a good laugh about that. And uh, But I think we did, I think we ma maintained our composure and we we kept playing, we, we followed kind of the system we were playing in and I think the ball has gone out of the ground because one of their supporters threw it over the roof which uh, came back to bite him I think a bit later because we obviously scored in the injury time but obviously at this stage they're just trying to slow the game down completely which you would do in this position because they know they can't probably score again and I'm obviously trying to remind the linesman to, to add this time on and to hurry the game up because we needed the game to maintain a high tempo because if the game had gone flat, they probably would have got over the line. So it was really important. We we kept the game moving. We kept the ball in play. We kept the ball in in their half, not in our half, where they could pin us into corners like they're trying to do here. And um, again, the boys kept their composure. It would have been easy in this time to be really, really erratic with so much at stake. And every time you're pinned back in situations like this, you, you know you've got to go all the way up the pitch. And again, not giving a silly foul away, Winning the ball back, and again now we can we can get ourselves up the pitch and and move up. And again, we were able to do that towards the end, go long from from kicks because we had bodies up there. I think this is where the second goal comes from. Obviously, Hodgie with a little bit of magic to win a free kick and then I mean this is unbelievable quick thinking from him to spot the ball and play great run from Armani oh 2-2 two -two. Kretschmar incredible finish this finish does not ever get the credit it deserves 
And we talked about him playing from the left because we wanted him to come inside and get in these positions because he's a goal scorer. You would not have wanted another player to have this chance because it needed such a big element of composure to not thrash at the ball. And if you look at the window with the gap he's got to get the ball through to score, look at the gap he's got to get the ball. If he volleys out of his lace, he doesn't score. To just side for that in like that is incredible. And again, keeping the, passing the ball to get it wide. The boys still batter Poku about this because he didn't stop the quick free kick. They both turn their back. And then Armani makes a break into the box and incredible finish. And now we're in. Game on. Game on. And again, the energy then, you can feel it in the dugout. If it shows the dugout in a minute, everyone's suddenly, everyone's suddenly up and engaged. And, and there was a, probably a brief two or three second chat between me, Martin and Douse to say, right, should we change the shape to get another midfielder in or should we go for the win now? And that lasted all of two seconds. Douse said, let's, let's go and win the game now. We're not, we're not playing for extra time. And, and that got onto the pitch. You look and look at our lads now having just dragged themselves back into the game, the speed of which they're trying to do things. And we smelt blood. We knew we could go for the win now. We didn't want extra time. We wanted to finish the game now while we were on the up. And sometimes it's just a feeling. You just feel you can go and go and win this game now. You've you've dragged back an impossible situation. And and now you can go and win the game and, and produce a miracle. But this was a little warning to us actually when the ball they broke on us quick and I think we'd maybe overcommitted and thought it was going to be all out attack and it was a little warning to us that I think and probably kept us honest again because they could still threaten and it sometimes happened you drag yourself back in the game you get a bit overexcited and then you get caught the other end so it was a bit of a warning Physically, we were probably better prepared to defend set pieces at this stage because Ferdinand was on and we had Heidi on as well coming back to defend them. So we had some good size in the box to defend set pieces. So we did a lot better job towards the end. Heart in mouth. Your heart's in your mouth anytime anything like that happens. And we're unlucky with that. A bit of angle on that kick and we probably would have got in again with Greg Lua, but... Anytime the ball's in around your goal in this situation, there's so much at stake now, so you can literally feel it. And the noise, the noise, <laughs> winning a corner, the noise is just deafening. And it's hard to keep your composure. We're in the dugout, we're trying to focus on the game and what's happening and trying to help the players any way we can, but to a certain extent, we can't do much more. And you need a special group of players to do special things, and that's certainly what this group was on the day. Another incredible header by Connor Stevens. I mean, what a header that was from him. But again, picking up second balls and keeping attacks going, and Armani Little was a big factor in that. He kept the ball ticking over like that for us and, and didn't, didn't waste possession. He's really unlucky, Hodgie. I, I think that's a soft foul, actually. <laughs> Hodgie obviously thinks the same, but he was really unlucky with that. But again, looking at causing problems. And for me now, Wilson are just holding on, obviously, for, for injury time. And they put the board up five additional minutes, which again, we still felt there'd be another chance in this game. For us, another good winner, header from Kane. And again, you've got to keep your composure. You're pinned in your own corner, you're in injury time. You know, you've still got to have that belief that something else can happen. And we knew it from the bench. We we would, you know, people on the bench, the subs, everyone, the staff, we're all saying, we'll get one more chance in this game. We'll get one more chance. We, we could kind of sense something was going to happen for us and it was just whether we'd have time to do it and I think that was the key so you know at two all the speed of which we're still trying to get the ball up the pitch and win the game 
And you watch Rossi here, I think, look, look at him. You know, you're talking about it's two or injury time just about to happen and the goalkeeper's sprinting to get the ball because we want to win it now. That's all about mentality. And again, we wanted to play in their half. That was the only probably information we put onto the pitch because at this stage, we couldn't have done much more. We, we were hoping that the players had it in them to find the solution and, and have that moment of magic. And the only thing we just kept saying was just keep, keep playing in their half, keep working angles and opportunities to, to create something. And you need to watch Casey actually for the goal because a lot of people wind him up in the, in the squad about what were you doing up there? But if you actually watch, it's just the, the presence of mind to follow his run. Because the ball ricochets off him and he just follows his run. Look here, watch Casey, look. Just thinks something's going to happen, look. Follows his run. Got no right to be there, really. Great flick. Not offside. Oh! Ho, 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 ho. What a finish. What a finish. <laughs> The scenes. Toby Edsler in the jacket. He'd not been around since January in the squad, but you could just see what it means to everyone. The bench emptied. I think you see me and Martin trying to get the team back. Look at me and Martin not trying to get the players back. And what do we do, right? And this is where you've got to have enough presence of mind to kind of get everyone focused again. You, you've still got a couple of minutes to play, but it just absolute euphoria. I've never felt a moment like that in terms of a single goal going in. Just incredible. And what a finish again, Heidi. I mean, it's, it's a really difficult finish with the outside of your boot to, to execute that. and Unbelievable scenes. And look at, I mean, the bench is up. Look, you know, we're trying to organise, trying to get people reorganised. We wanted to then drop into a 4 5 1. Again, you look how deft that little flick is. If he heads that too hard, there's no chance. So, you know, absolutely perfect. And then that is an incredible finish again. You talk about composure when there's everything at stake. What a goal. <laughs> and the crowd's on the pitch. Wow. And now, minute and a half to go, maybe. We dropped Greg Lua back in. We'd left Heidi up. We said, you go and deal with that up there and try and pressure. And Greg Lua dropped back in. And we just basically went to, to a 4-5-1 to get bodies around the ball and just defend our half. And I think that was probably the moment for me. Once that had gone over, you could kind of sense you were you were right there. You were right there. I love that Michael Kamara and Malk's a kit man. Collier, Kadugan who had come off, Olu had come off. Everyone up, the kit man. Look at Paul. Paul's nearly on the pitch. <laughs> and you're so close to, to producing this incredible result. And we're telling Rossi to kick the ball wide because we wanted to then pin them in their corners. Obviously, there's a few seconds still to eke out and we wanted to take the ball away from the middle of the pitch. It's a great kick because it goes wide and, and we wanted to keep the ball out of the middle of the pitch. And what a tremendous header this is from Armani. What a header. And this is where we wanted the ball, just in the corner here because they'd have a long way to go to score from there and we could get bodies behind the ball and... Yeah, we, we managed this last part of the game. I thought the players really, really well. Didn't... Kept their composure really well. Just waiting for that whistle to go. Come on, ref. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Really important for us as staff, we went and, and straight over to, to their bench and, and especially Bobby Wilkinson because, you know, having been in it obviously a long time, when you're on the losing side of that, it must be absolutely crushing. So we wanted to pay them that respect and, and make sure we, the first thing we did was go and shake hands with them and, you know, 
and commiserate them because there was another side to that obviously and it was Wildstone and actually had Wildstone won this game they would have won the final in my opinion so that's probably what a, a defining moment it was for them as well and just incredible scenes absolutely incredible scenes the great thing about the celebrations was that everyone was involved you know you see backroom staff you see subs that had come off you see people that hadn't come on you see me giving a little wave to my family at the top of the crowd but but you just saw everyone in, in it together even players that weren't in the squad on the day were getting involved and were genuinely happy and um and that says a lot i think about the togetherness of that group and a result like that can't happen unless you've got that team spirit and and i think that was the overriding thing you know yes we had lots of ability but the overriding thing that got us through that playoff campaign was was team spirit and drive none more so than that young man to be fair and a local hero just amazing scenes <laughs> And we wanted the boys to enjoy this. I think it's sometimes easy to say, well, you know, we've got a final next week, get off the pitch. And But I think you want people to enjoy this moment and to use this energy and, and the crowd to, to push us through the following week. And I think that did that. So I certainly don't think we over-celebrated a semi-final win because I think of the way it happened. And this certainly sparked us on for the following week. And you know, in front of 5,000 people the following week to, to, to perform the way we did and get over the line the way we did, I think was a lot off of the energy of this game. And that's why I think we really wanted the boys to, to stay on the pitch and embrace it. There's Moose. A Kabamba in the crowd. I bet he didn't buy his ticket. <laughs> but brilliant. Absolutely fantastic scenes. And the crowd certainly played, played a big part in that. And... Um, you know, I don't think that can be underestimated on the day. Kicking towards that big crowd. Fantastic. Touch of class for Molu. That sums him up, to be fair, as a lad. Touch of class, and a few of the lads did that. Because obviously, Wildstone played their played their part, and like I said, if, if they'd have held out and beat us, they would have won the final. It's great to see. I've, I've not seen a lot of these shots like people like Cookie in the crowd. Absolutely fantastic, and you know, as much as it means a hell of a lot to the the supporters and lifelong supporters. For these players as well, I mean, you don't get moments like that very often in your career, so it's incredible to watch it back and see what it meant to so many people and to be a part of it on the day. You know, I only had one view of it from, from the from the touchline, but to see, you know, the views of all these different people is, um, yes, amazing. It makes you very, very uh, proud to have been a part of this. and. And thankfully as well, it had the right outcome, obviously the following week, getting the job done and, and getting promoted. And it means you can look back at moments like this and and be so happy about it. I mean, what an incredible day. And, and days like that don't happen very often and comebacks like that don't happen very often. So yeah, really, really special. <laughs> 